Okay, so let's take a look at section 9.4, uh, composition of transformations. And really all that means is that we're looking at things that are composed of more than one translation. So multiple things have occurred. It's reflected and rotated, reflected and translated, translated and rotated. All of those are compositions of transformations. So uh, this power note format is going to be new to you. So just put your name, date, period. What we're looking for is to be able to combine two or more transformations. At the end, what you should be able to do is summarize what a glide reflection is, and you can put it right here. Okay, and that glide reflection, uh, I've got a little illustration here we can take a look at to try and help you visualize, then we'll work through some examples. So if I have triangle ABC that's graphed here in the coordinate plane, and if I wanted to say reflected over the y-axis, it would move over here. This is four units away, so it'll move four units on that side. This is six units away, so this will be six units over here. This is seven, so this will be seven units over there. So it'll look like this. And then once it does that, if I reflect, or excuse me, translated it by a vector of two, seven, so it slides two units right, seven units down, that's how it affects the x and the y values. So plus two on x, minus seven on y, plus two is right, minus seven is down. That'll slide like that. So what we just did was reflect it over y, and then we slid it down. We've worked on reflections, we've worked on translations. So the difference here is with a glide reflection, which is a composition of transformations, uh, really we're just having both events occur. So if you were looking at from the pre-image to the image, it would look like this. So it moves directly from the pre-image to the image. But in order for us to get it there, that glide reflection, we break it down into, into its components. And in this case, it's a reflection over y and a translation by a vector. Simple as that. So again, looking at the definition, the composition of transformations, the result of two or more transformations being combined to form one transformation. A glide reflection is an example. We are using two isometric transformations, meaning the image is congruent to the pre-image. All that means is that we are preserving the shape and size of the image and pre-image. It doesn't change. It just slides, rotates, reflects around the graph. So in example one here, what they ask us to do is we have a triangle, ABC, and it's at 3, 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. There's a 6, 3, so I go over to 6, up to 3, that is B. And then I have point C, which is 7, 1. So there's C. I'm going to go ahead and connect those. And there's my triangle, A, B, C. They want to know where the image is. Remember, the image comes after, the before is the pre pre meaning before, pre-image, after the glide reflection. So we're going to translate it. So we're going to move the x, y each coordinate by negative 12, y. And what that means, so this is the coordinate notation for a translation, is I'm going to subtract 12 from all the x's. And if I write that over here, I can find the new coordinates. So a was at 6, 3. So I'm going to say 6, 3. And from that, I'm going to subtract 12. And the y, I don't subtract anything. It's just what it is. So it just says y. So I'm going to do that for my three points here. I'm sorry, this was point b. And point c. And so each of these we are just subtracting. So we subtract 12 from all of our x's, and the y doesn't change. So I'm just writing minus 0. So when we want to find the new coordinates then, after this translation, 3 take away 12 is going to be negative 9 and then 2. So this one now comes over to negative 9 and 2. 6 minus 12 is negative 6 and 3, so negative 6 up at 3. 
and 7 minus 12 is negative 5 and 1. So we see what's really happened here is this shape, triangle ABC, simply slid 12 units to the left. So this image just came over here and slid 12 units this way, landed right there. Then the second thing is it needs to reflect over the x-axis. So that's what we were doing with translations. Now we're going to go back to reflections. When you combine the two, you have a composition. So all of these reflect over. So now that I have these points plotted, this is still A, B, C. I'm not writing the prime because I'm not done yet. When I reflect it over, I'll go ahead and indicate the prime, showing that this is the image. So remember, over the x-axis, which is our horizontal, this is one, two units above, so it'll be one, two units below, and there's A prime. B is one, two, three units above, so it will be one, two, three units below, B prime. And then C is one unit up, so it will be one unit below, and there is C prime. I'm going to go ahead and connect these in red to show that it's the final shape. So this glide reflection, triangle ABC, translated and reflected to become triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And that's all we're doing. We're just combining multiple transformations together. Let's take a look at another example. So this one says that we take that same triangle in example one, and it's translated four units down, then reflected in the y-axis. What are the coordinates of the vertices of the image? Well, let's take a look. So remember, back in number one, that was three, two, six, three, seven, one. Okay, so there's A, B, C. So we're gonna take those same coordinates, three, two, six, three, point A, point B. Start getting in the habit of labeling all of your points. Geometry is very specific in its notation. So we're going to go ahead and connect these. There's segment AB, segment BC, segment AC. And there's my same triangles in the first one. But now it's going to translate four units down. So that's just four down. So if we're going to write that as a vector, and over here in the left-hand side, like we talked about, this is where you might want to go ahead and make some study notes, uh, questions that you have, some things that you want to solidify, things like that. So I'm just going to write vector, and this would be the vector, four units down. So it doesn't affect the x value at all. It doesn't move right or left, but it moves four down, so I know that's minus four. So I'm going to write that in vector form. So all of these points go down one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it moves down here. So there's my translation, four units down. And then it's reflected in the y-axis. So now we're going to reflect it over y, so that's the vertical. So this, point A here is one, two, three to the right of it. So I'm going to move it one, two, three to the left of it. If you're using the coordinates, this one's at three, negative two. So it's just going to flip the sign of the x and become negative 3, negative 2. And this would be a prime. b is 6 units away. I know that very easily because it's right here at 6 on x. So I'm going to go to negative 6 over here. And there's b prime. c is 7 units away. So I'm going to go to 7 units over here. And that is c prime. Again, we always label our points so that we know what's occurring. I know that this is now point A, point B, and point C. These are the primes because this is the image. This was the pre-image, triangle ABC. That's where we started after the transformation. I end up with the image, A prime, B prime, C prime. And there we've uh, translated this four units down and reflected across Y.
Okay, in this example, we have some segments. The endpoint's a segment RS. It might also be abbreviated like that with the notation segment RS. Is it 1, negative 3? So 1, negative 3, that is R. And then at 2, negative 6, that is S. And that is segment RS. And this is what occurs to it. It's reflected in the y-axis and then rotated 90 degrees. So let's take a look. So this is reflected across y. Well, that one's pretty easy. I just move it it's one unit away. So I move it one unit on this side. Again, when you reflect across y, the x values just change sign. This was at 1 on x. Now it's at negative 1. This was at 2 on x. So now it's at negative 2. So that moves over here. Then it might be easiest if I write down the coordinates. So this is then at negative 1, negative 3. And this is at negative 2, negative 6. Okay? And then maybe I make myself a note over here or something else I need a reminder on. But remember, when it rotates 90 degrees about the origin, a 90 degree rotation, my x, y is going to become negative y, x. So that's how they're going to change. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to transform it, I'm going to flip them. And then I'm flipping the sign of the first number here. So that flips back positive. So then it's going to go to 3, negative 1. So if I mark this, I go to 3, negative 1. And at 6, negative 2. And we'll draw the segment between those. And again, when that occurs, 3, negative 1 was R, so this is R prime. And this was S, so this is S prime. So after this composition of transformations, this is a reflection and a rotation. It reflected over here, rotated 90 degrees. And the last one here, we have the vertices of triangle PQR at 2, 4, 6, 0, and 7, 2. I'm going to go ahead and connect those. I'm going to label it PQR. And after this composition of functions, it's being translated and then rotated. So first thing I'm going to do is translate it, and that's minus 4 plus 5. So I can either write the coordinates again like we did in the earlier example, or I can just slide these all over to the left and up 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's my new triangle. I'm going to write down these coordinates because that will make it easier for the uh, rotation. Again, I'm going to want to make myself a note over here, 180 degree rotation. How does your x and y coordinate change? Well, x, y become negative x, negative y. So this was at negative 2, 9. So that one is going to become 2, negative 9. This one is at 2, 5. This one's at 3, 7. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate those 180 degrees. If we need to write it down over here. Go ahead and do that. So these are going to transform to negative 9. 
negative 3, negative 7, negative 2, negative 5. So these go to 2, negative 9, So that is now point P prime, 3, 7, point R is going to become negative 3, negative 7, that is R prime, and point Q is going to become negative 2, negative 5, that is Q prime, and we'll connect those three. And so it's translated to the left and up, and then rotated 180 degrees right here. So that's the composition of transformations of a translation and 180 degree rotation. And we can do the same thing here with our triangle, 246072. So we'll plot this again, 2, 4, 6, 0, 7, 2, so here's our pre-image, and that was triangle PQR. And in this case, we're going to reflect over x and then translate. So to do that, this is four units above. x is your horizontal, so I'm going to move four units below. This is right on it, so it stays. This is two above, so I move two below. So that was pretty easy. It's just been folded over the x-axis. And then I translate it by plus two, minus two. So that's two to the right, two down. So I'm going to go... 1, 2, 1, 2. And there's P prime. 1, 2, 1, 2. Q prime. 1, 2, 1, 2. And there is R prime. So it's no different than what we've done, so it's really a little more practice. We uh, are doing rotations, translations, reflections, but now we're combining multiple events. So have your note sheet filled out, bring any questions, and we'll get some more practice uh, in class tomorrow.